In the previous video, we have derived this formula down here for the dead weight loss. So the, this is the formula for the dead weight loss of a consumption tax or of a sales tax. And in that model, the supply curve is completely horizontal, which means that the entire dead weight loss and the entire tax burden is borne by the consumers. Now, the goal here is for a given revenue to minimize the amount of the deadweight loss. And to understand what's happening here, it is very useful to express the deadweight loss the way we did here, because it depends on basically two factors. So forget for a moment this x over p, which just tells us basically what is the initial equilibrium from which we start. But the two important factors here are the elasticity and the tax. And what's interesting here is that the deadweight loss is proportional to the tax, but not to the tax itself, but to its square. So what does that mean? is if the tax doubles, the deadweight loss more than doubles. What it also means is that, and what's, what's also the case is that the deadweight loss is proportional to the elasticity of demand. So if the elasticity of demand is high, so the demand curve is very flat, the deadweight loss will be higher than when the elasticity of demand is very low and the, the demand curve is very steep. And so we will look at this now in graphs to understand the intuition behind that. So here we see what I've drawn already in the previous video, mm -hmm. um, how the, the deadweight loss depends on the demand elasticity. Right? So here in for demand curve one, we have a high elasticity. Right? So, so, so it's easy for consumers to, to move away. And here we have a low epsilon. So we have a low elasticity. So, so we have actually a very steep demand curve. Right? And so um, here the deadweight loss in the second case with the low demand elasticity is actually smaller than for the, for the good that has a high elasticity. Why is that? Is there an intuition behind it? Yes, there is. If it is easy for consumers to move away and to do something else, um, then they will simply do so. And so what we have here is if you think about this increase in the price, they will respond very heavily. We will have a huge decrease in the number of units that are getting consumed. And so even though the, the tax revenue may be the same, but the, uh, the, the deadweight loss is very big due to that strong change in the number of units consumed. Whereas if consumers have very few alternatives and so their demand is very inelastic, what we see here is, uh, is that blue triangle is smaller because the same increase in price doesn't lead to such a big reduction in the quantity consumed. And so therefore the deadweight loss is a lot smaller. The efficiency loss to the economy is a lot smaller. Now the second property of the deadweight loss is that it is proportional to the square of the tax rate. What does that mean? Okay, let's, let's look into this again. So, so remember the deadweight loss equals minus epsilon times x over p times t squared divided by 2. And right, now we want to look at that t squared, that relationship. Okay, so instead of having a tax t, we're now saying, okay, suppose we double the tax. What's going to happen is that the deadweight loss 
quadruples. Right? That, that's what the, the, the proportionality with the square tells us. So what does this mean? It means that that triangle that I trace here in blue is four times the size of the triangle that I shade here in red. Why is that? Well, because because of the of the square. Um, you can think about it as follows. I'm just gonna draw it in in here um, in a different color. Let's draw this in green. So we usually have a better sense. Uh, or a better intuition for uh, for squares when we look at actual squares rather than triangles. Okay, so so imagine that um, the initial square is is that. Okay, and so so now when the 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 size of that square. Um, when 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 t increases from t to 2t and the size of that square is is proportional to t squared then the size of that square quadruples as in we have square 1 square 2 square 3 and square 4 okay? and so so here it's the same you can think about about it like that here we have triangle one triangle two triangle three and triangle four and so we have in so so because the dead weight loss is proportional to the square if of t if t goes up by 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 two the dead weight loss goes up by four and that's what we've shown here okay and so so that obviously also has implications for the optimal tax rate so it tells us that we shouldn't have a tax rate that's very high because of this, this square effect or this quadratic effect in here. Okay? So rather than having a very high tax on, on one good and none on another, we would probably rather spread it out, but then, you know, and, and tax both goods. But then it also depends on the slope of the demand curve of both goods. And this is what we will see in the next videos.